Hi there, I am Pratiksha Mishra and you're listening to Do I Like It, a Quinn production where we review anything and everything under the sun. And in this episode, I will tell you if I like Kala. I want to apologize right off the bat for my voice because uh, my throat is scratchy and I'm not exactly sure why. Got all the tests done. It's nothing bad. So I guess it's just eating ice cream at 4 a.m. is probably the issue here. But anyway, apologies for that. So with Kala actually, um, okay, let me give you some context. If you haven't watched Kala, go watch it. But listen to this first, I guess. Or promise, promise that you will come back and listen to this. Kala is about a character named Kala who is played by Tripti Dimri and her mother Urmila played by Swastika Mukherjee. Kala is a very interesting kind of um, take at mother-daughter relationships or parent-child relationships or you know intergenerational trauma if you will. So let's discuss that. Between Kala and Urmila, we see how Urmila's disdain towards Kala kind of makes her so demure and like so like closed in. And of course, that's going to happen. Her bache ko chahiye hota hai na ki unke maa baap, you know, just basic attention maa baap se. Uh, and of course, if you don't get that, it affects the way you grow. My therapist has said, I am not a licensed therapist, but she is. So most of my knowledge is coming from the things she has said to me. And this is not a new thing as such, like not a new theme, but it is now being well explored. Like remember Bhagwan? That was kind of the reverse. Ki, oh, these are... Kids have grown up to become mean monsters. Apne maa baap ko ghar se bahar phek diya. So evil, so bad. Now we finally have a trend. Not a trend as such, but like now finally people are making films where we see how childhood trauma, especially if inflicted by parents or families, can affect children going forward. Before I jump into it completely, I want to tell you that you can check out our other episodes from this series as well as other podcasts from The Quint on our website or wherever you get your podcast from. I think like now in Disney especially, I'm going to focus on Disney even though Kala is much, much darker and more sinister. In Disney, there is this rise of films where essentially millennials are making films to remind their parents to apologize. <laughs> um, outside of Disney also, let's talk about say everything everywhere all at once is I think a film that would most thematically be close to Kala. In Everything Everywhere All at Once, also we see that the daughter has a kind of a fractured relationship with her mother. It's not that her mother is not giving time to her or not giving her attention. But regardless, there are needs that are not being fulfilled emotionally as a child and there is that kind of dissonance. And that happens. I feel like it's... it's In that film, it's about like, okay, her mother essentially doesn't fully understand her and vice versa. She doesn't fully understand her mother either or us, us se unka relationship is a little frayed. In Kala, there is also the element of patriarchy, very important, where we see that Urmila ji apni beti ke liye virasat chahti hai, but apni nahi. Uske papa ki virasat chahti hai because she too is a product of her circumstances. You know, she has also grown up and is living in a patriarchal society and she sees how it affects women. And she doesn't want that for her daughter. But still, when Babel Khan's character Jagan enters the mix, she becomes part of the problem. You know, it's the, the thought of losing her son early on with this guy that has come in and she sees potential in this guy that she doesn't see in Kala. Even though they are all saying that they are different but they are both talented, yara, yara, yara. And we see how this affects Kala. End tak also, whenever someone's like, hey Kala, chill a little, you know, take a rest or something. She's like, no, I can sing, I can sing. She takes any sign of like resting or any sign of someone even being kind towards her as a sign of them not believing in her, which clearly comes up from her mother. This also happens, say, in Disney's Encanto, where this is less of a mother-daughter thing, more of a grandmother-granddaughter thing where the abuela and mirabel kind of share this relationship where abuela has kind of sidelined mirabel because mirabel doesn't have the same talents that the rest of the family has or us maybe you can see how abuela is not a villain you know in all of these films the women or like the mothers the grandmothers are not villains they're not villains they're not evil for evil's sake you know they're all again like i said characters born out of their circumstances. Abuela, especially as an immigrant woman whose family whose family and her 
house was snatched away from her grew up to be a certain way and that now when clashing with mirabel's ideology is causing issues and you see that difference between kala and mirabel in itself just from the fact that kala ke paas sirf urmila thi in that entire place of like himachal it's covered like it's covered by snow everywhere dur dur tak kuch nazar nahi aa raha it's just urmila and kala in encanto there's an entire family so even though her abuela doesn't support her or as such there's the rest of her family that does and in just that small change you see the difference between these two characters that is so important all these films have essentially replaced therapy for me not replaced i still go to therapy but they've helped me understand so much just about human nature and why we are the way that we are another film that we should of of course like how can i leave it out is turning red it is interesting also because like uh, turning red is directed by domishi the first woman ever to like solo direct a pixar feature and it's about a 13 year old chinese canadian girl mei li who is dealing with puberty and there is a huge metaphor surrounding the idea of just periods and we see patriarchy mirrored in the story as well uski maa ko pata hai ki hone wala hai but she hasn't told her as such maybe hoping that it doesn't affect her daughter even though it will her father wants to help but doesn't know how and at the same time meili is kind of realizing that her experience is not the same as her mother's you know ki uski maan ne jo cheez chupa ke rakhi hai she doesn't want to hide it and that's again another great way to kind of see how even within families women can have such different experiences with everything and they don't get to explore that because of the way patriarchy continues to affect them Turning Red of course is a wonderful film also all of these films honestly like take it as a recommendation i guess in a consider me your personal netflix like hey if you enjoyed kala here's some less traumatizing stuff that you can watch along with similar themes oh everything everywhere is not less traumatizing don't get me wrong it's it's um, it's similarly <laughs> it is going to hurt the same but yeah that's honestly my entire rant about Uh, women and mothers and daughters and grandmothers and granddaughters and how intergenerational trauma can actually just be very sinister it's it's something that can affect you your entire life to get like serious for a bit but if it helps i think films like these being made kind of just means that you're not alone you know you watch this and you realize that it's it is something that happens and I mean kala is uh, sad kala is very sad but then there's also the films outside that kind of tell you that it's okay you know it's okay to be scared it's not a you thing you're going to be fine <laughs> that was all for this episode thank you so much for listening if you want to interact with me or send me your thoughts about kala or any of these films that I talked about you can find me on twitter at at the rate prat jono that's p r a t and on instagram as Rat Mishra X O that's M I S H R A I'm excited to hear your thoughts so reach out Do I like it is a Queen production executive produced by Ritu Kapoor and Shelly Walia hosted by me Pratiksha Mishra produced and edited by Anjali Palod with music from Netflix and BMG production See you next time You were listening to the Queen's podcast